The third and final season of The Bad Batch is here, and with it comes some insane revelations on the clones in the Star Wars universe. Welcome to Star Wars Uplink. So we got the first three episodes of Bad Batch Season 3, and it took a little bit of a slower intro to the series. It definitely is feeling more mature in its storytelling. It's not just pretending like no one's watched the last two seasons like this is definitely the final season of a show for sure the tonal shift just in these first three episodes has been so much heavier Mm -hmm. it's like oh yeah we've clearly witnessed a death and bad things are coming Yeah, and, and it, it almost felt, I, I've seen a couple people say it almost felt more Andor-esque. Hmm. Like it was definitely more of this idea of like, okay, we know what we're going to be doing here. We know we're going to end. Because I feel like that's a lot of the struggle with like an animated show. Like they often will run for multiple seasons and it's not the same. I mean, there's like hand standouts with like Avatar The Last Airbender where they knew they were only going to do three seasons and that yeah. kind of stuff. But a lot of the times the animated shows don't necessarily know where they're going to end. Mm -hmm. So this was definitely very much appreciated. Yeah, definitely them saying, hey, now we know what we're doing. We're ending it and this is how it's going to go sort of thing. Like they're preparing for the bang Mm -hmm. and that's very scary. (laughs) Yes. Uh, But I want to talk about like specific pieces of what they've done here. And this is similar to what they did with like Mandalorian season three and Bad Batch season two. But this time it's Bad Batch season three and Ahsoka season one. And a little bit of Mandalorian season three, honestly, Mm. Uh, because they're taking a lot of the ideas that were introduced in this project that was, as we see in Bad Batch season three, kicked off by... Palpatine, which is Project Necromancer. Yeah. And this was mentioned first in The Mandalorian Season 3 with Captain Pelion. He Mm. mentioned that Project Necromancer is moving along and is kind of like spearheaded by Thrawn now. And I, I think that's interesting because one, it's getting introduced in this and we know that there's the entire original trilogy that happens in between this season of the show and what Bad Batch Season 3 is doing and then what it will eventually be with like Thrawn and stuff. So there's a considerable amount of time that is being, I don't know, like not much is happening, but we do know that someone somewhere is working in the behind the scenes on this, but we don't know where it's going to go yet. Yeah, it's an interesting filler of information, I would say. Yeah, Bad Batch is just like a really interesting commentary on cloning and the importance of it and also just the obsession of Palpatine. Like, this is like we're actually getting the information that no one knew about him Mm -hmm. until, like, the sequel trilogy. Yeah. (laughs) We're like, oh, apparently he liked to clone himself. Okay, cool. Like... Uh Now we're getting the backstory to that, so that's that's actually pretty nice. Mm-hmm. It is. It's really cool to see Palpatine in this specific position, and so early on in the season. Obviously, we saw him in season two of Bad Badge, but this is definitely like him on the ground in this situation that he is fulfilling the role that we assume him to be filling in a mm-hmm. lot of these meetings and stuff. Yeah, and this is pretty early on in his career as the Emperor as well. Like this True. is pretty soon after he takes control of the Senate. Mm -hmm. and creates the empire that's true that is true i wouldn't say that i'm like terrified of the emperor right now Mm -hmm. like i think we'll hopefully there wasn't the weight or like fear from the clones around him yeah everyone was just kind of like okay yeah this is just the dude that we all just pay homage to or something like it wasn't like ah he's coming sort of thing like Uh, it was all just like very routine very just like yep and it's interesting to see Hemlock in that position because Hemlock is trying to mm. kind of submit himself into this role as chief science officer almost. Yeah. Like that's kind of his ultimate goal is to bring this project Necromancer and the idea of cloning even more into the future. Uh-huh. And I wonder if at the end of this season he's going to die mm. or if he's going to be in this role into the future almost because like yeah we know palpatine survives through all this yeah we know that he's the main villain of the original trilogy here uh we know that not much is done in terms of cloning and we know it's not picked up again necessarily until like 
the Mandoverse time frame. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what the ultimate end goal is here. But we haven't even mentioned the big reveal, which was Omega and the M count or Metachlorians, as as we would know it. But yes. now they're kind of hiding it under this idea of the M count. Yep. Don't say man Metachlorians. <laughs> the dirty word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that was not unexpected mm -hmm. i would say at least for our circles yeah i like mean from was... the beginning we're kind of like yeah. what's going on here uh -huh. there's got to be some some reason why omega is this big character mm -hmm. in the show i'm not exactly sure why it's not that why it's such a big deal because that makes sense but like why did they feel they needed to create her as a clone with that mm -hmm. you know like i'm curious as to like what they were doing why, the, why in the, the first place did they try to make a force sensitive clone yeah was this just them like the kaminoans experimenting being like hey this is just for science i want to know if we can do this i think so it yeah it's, it's clear that it's not palpatine's doing like right. we all kind of assumed it would be mm -hmm. um yeah i feel like as the 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 show moved on and as we see especially in like the destruction of Kamino in mm -hmm. season one Palpatine did not have a belief that he could control the Kaminoans as easily in that specific position yeah. and wanted to use them on much smaller scales like he's not trying to create an army of force sensitive clones right he's just trying to find ways of to, of like furthering his life yeah I guess I'm curious as to why Nala say is now having this like moral compass. I guess well, like she why um, already always had it I because guess in that's season true, one she she's been very protective of Omega. Yeah, but why would you create her and then be like no one can have you? <laughs> I don't know. I'm confused as to like w the scientific reasoning behind we can do this now no one can mm -hmm. nothing else can happen to it now i guess or like i think honestly it may have been something that they wanted to keep internal hmm. and they kind of knew that palpatine was trying to move away from the kaminoan research yeah. facility um I, I definitely think there's something to be said there around the the kaminoans knowing what could happen and trying to keep some of the cards under the table hmm. or up their sleeve right which is probably also what leads to palpatine just destroying just them all and them, like yeah. listen <laughs> i know you're doing things that i want and you're not giving them to me so that mm -hmm. makes sense i guess yeah that that's my theory on i think there's like both the Kaminoans and Palpatine were playing their own cards or keeping mm -hmm. not uh, like some of the cards off of the table. Yeah. But obviously Palpatine is Palpatine. Of course. And will win. Yeah. And now that Omega is in that role, I think there's going to be some interesting things there. And now that they know that mm -hmm. Omega is at least somewhat force sensitive or has the M count that is not degradated or whatever. Right. I think it's going to be interesting to see what they do with that going forward. Mm -hmm. And it definitely seems like that's going to be a big piece of this season. Like, what is yeah. it? One, what does it mean to be a clone? Mm -hmm. Two, what does it mean to find this family? And, and three, in terms of like what is Palpatine's master plan here and knowing that Palpatine will win mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> we kind of know what's gonna happen Ugh. we know that he's going to have a clone of himself mm -hmm. we know th some things are going to work out s in certain ways for in his favor yes mm -hmm. at least in terms of like him becoming the Empire Emperor and then like continuing his rule across the galaxy like we know those things are going to happen yeah and from Rise of Skywalker we know he at least succeeded in cloning himself mm -hmm. how do you feel about crosshair kind of being back in the seat with the <laughs> with omega running away i like it yeah. i think it's i think it's a good redemption arc it's like mm -hmm. classic star wars in terms of like yes we yeah. have a character that lost their way a little bit refound it and unfortunately like felt the repercussions of his actions which i think is going to be another theme in mm -hmm. this season of yeah. like the things you do will have repercussions yeah. here. And I think that's going to be good to see. Yeah. I think his handshaking is not going to get better. Yes. I think it's going to ruin him as Crosshair and he's mm -hmm. not quite going to be the same that he was. Yeah. And that's, but they're still going to accept him, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it, that asks the question of like, what is a clone? Like, right. especially what is this kind of clone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This group 
is no longer just about this like their special abilities it's Mm -hmm. so much more than that yeah it's gonna add to the found family kind of trying to have their true freedom Mm -hmm. i think it's definitely gonna be interesting but let us know your thoughts in the comments below and check out our podcast as always may the force be with you